All right, today we're going to learn the last and final section, which is 3.4 about factoring expressions. I'd like you to pull out your red pen and fill in the blanks on these notes. All right, guys, the first thing we have here, it says GCF. Tell me, what does GCF stand for, class? Greatest common factor. Greatest common factor, okay? So we're going to be looking for the GCF today, and that's the greatest common factor between two numbers. Another thing we're going to see today is something called factoring expressions. What this means is you're going to pull out the greatest common factor between the terms. Okay, so we're going to talk about what is a GCF. A GCF is the greatest common factor between two numbers. We're going to figure out how we find the GCF. And the main way that we're going to do that is by listing the factors. So there's a few steps I want you to write down with your red pen. First off, number one, which number should you choose, class? The, smallest. the smallest number. Very good. Then number two says to list the what of that number? Factors. The factors. Then as you do that, you will start with the largest number and work your way down the other factors until you find a factor that goes into the other number. I'm gonna tell you what that means here in just a minute. Finally, you'll know the biggest factor of both the numbers will be called your GCF. All right, so we are gonna use those steps that we just wrote down to help us find the GCF. Step number one, what does it say that you just wrote down? Number one says choose the smallest, the smallest number. Kamari, what is the smallest number out of eight and 24? Eight is the smallest number. So everybody, to the right, I want you to write an eight. Step number two. What does it say in your notes? Step number two? List the factors of that number. So we're listing the factors of number eight. One times what equals eight? eight. One times eight. Does two times anything equal eight? Four. Very good. Two times four. How about three? Does three times anything equal eight? No, all right? So these are the factors of eight. Now I want you to look at number three. It says start with the largest number to see. Can this largest number right here, class, can it fit into both an eight and a 24, yes or no? Yes, yes that means that that is my GCF. Everybody circle that eight, and the answer is the GCF is eight. All right, so that's how you find the GCF of two numbers. Let's look at problem B. 9y plus 15. Out of those two numbers, Miles, what is the smallest number? 9. Everybody write the 9 next to it. Who can list the factors for me of that? Kendall, what would they be? Very good. 1 times 9 and 3 times 3. Let's start with the biggest number. The biggest number is a 9. Can a 9 go into this 9 and this 15? Yes or no? No, a 9 cannot evenly go into a 15. Let's go with the next number down, the 3. Can a 3 go into both of those? Yes, yes that means that the 3 is my GCF. So we will write the GCF equals 3. How many of you remember how to find the GCF? Maybe you've talked about this in sixth or even in fifth grade, okay? So this is how you find the GCF. And we're going to use this information to help us with our lesson today. Step number two gives us new instructions. It says factor the expression using the GCF. There's three steps that I want you to do. First off, you have to find the, the GCF. Very good. Then you're going to take the GCF and put it outside the parentheses. Finally, what does this last step tell us to do, class? Take each term and divide by the GCF. All right, so here we go. First things first, find the GCF. Karis, out of 28 and 18, what's the smaller number? Two? Nope. Out of 28 and 18, what's smaller, a 28 oh, or an 18? There you go. That's okay. 18. Karis, can you list the factors for me of an 18? Uh, two. Let's start with one. One, one times? One times uh, 18. Good job. Uh, two times a nine. Very good. Uh, uh, six. No. Oh, yeah. Six times three. Okay. Is there anything else? No. You are correct. All right. Now, out of all of these, we're going to start with the biggest number. Let's start with this 18. Class, can an 18 fit evenly into a 28? No. No, it cannot. Let's go to the next number. How about a 9? Can it fit evenly into a 28? 
No. No, it cannot. Can a six fit into a 28? Yes. No. No, it cannot. Can a three evenly go into a 28? No. No. Can a two evenly go in? Yes. Yes. That means the greatest common factor that can go into an 18 that can also go into a 28 is a two. Okay? So two is our GCF. Now here's the deal. Let's use these instructions to help us. We found the GCF and now it says put the GCF outside of the parentheses. All right, so we're going to take that two and put it outside. This is our original problem. We are going to rewrite the original problem. 28x minus 18. Now that was this step right here where it says put the GCF outside the parentheses. Let's read our final step. What does this step tell us to do, class? Take each term and divide by the GCF. Remind me again, Kendall, what was our GCF? Two. So I'm going to take each term, 28x, and I will divide that by two. Then I'm going to take my negative 18 and I'm also going to divide that by two. Okay, now we have done all of those steps right there, but we're going to simplify the problem, or we're going to divide what we see there. So this 2 is on the outside of our parentheses. Repeat after me. Drop it down. Drop it down. All right, so that gets dropped down. Now let's focus on this. Class, what is 28x divided by 2? 14x. Thank you for remembering 14x. Now, let's focus on this. Class, what is negative 18 divided by 2? Negative 9. That is our final answer. You don't need to write this down, but I want to show you something. Do you guys remember distributive property? We've been talking a lot about that. When there's a number on the outside of the parentheses. So once again, don't write this down, but I want everyone to watch what I do. If this number is outside the parentheses, we're going to multiply it by both terms. Joshua, what is 2 times 14x? 28x. 28x. Kyler, what is 2 times negative 9? Negative 18. Negative 18. Now, class, do you see that this right here was what we had at our original problem. Yes. So what I am teaching you today is basically how to do reverse distributive property, okay? And that's what this answer is, is the reverse of what we have done when we learned distributive property before. All right, so let's look at problem B. Uh, Christopher, what is the smaller out of these two numbers? Four. Everybody write a four off to the side. Christopher, list the factors for me of the number four. Out of all of those numbers, what number is the greatest number that can fit into a 4 and into a 20? 4. Everybody circle the 4. That means the 4 is our GCF. Now remember, we have to pull that out. So we're going to take out a 4. And let's rewrite the original problem. Because I have taken a 4 out, what do I have to divide every term by inside of my parentheses? Also by a 4. So now I'm going to divide the first term by 4 and divide the second term by 4. And this is how we factor the expression. All right, so that number outside the parentheses, repeat after me. Drop it down. Drop it down. We are dropping down the 4. Max, what is 4y divided by 4? 1y. Very good. Now, class, do I need to keep that 1 there? You do not have to have the 1 there. You can keep it there if you want, or you don't have to, because 1y is the same thing as a regular y. Arion, what is negative 20 divided by 4? Negative 5 is correct, and that is our final answer. Okay, so the next section, section 3. It's very interesting, and it actually really helps us because this is what it says. Factor out the coefficient of the variable term. So it's telling us what we have to factor out. We don't even have to find the GCF now because it tells us to take out the coefficient. Remind me again, guys, what is a coefficient? The number part, the number part of a variable term. Class, what is the number part of this variable term? One half. One half. So I am going to take one half out of this expression. Everybody rewrite the original problem, one half x plus three halves. 
If I have taken out a one half over here, what do I have to divide every term by inside the parentheses? By the same exact thing. So we're going to divide by one half on both terms. Let's talk about the number out here. What do I need to do to the number that's outside the parentheses, class? Drop it down. Drop it down. Now we're going to focus on this first section right here. Before we look at that and get overwhelmed because it's fractions, I want you to think through something that we know already. Class, what is 5 divided by 5? 1. 1. What is 10 divided by 10? 1. What's 30 divided by 30? 1. So guess what 1 half divided by 1 half is? 1. 1. Anything divided by itself always equals 1. So that is simply going to be 1 x. You can leave the one there or you do not have to. Now the next part. You guys have a little bit more room than I do over here to the left of your problem. So I want you guys to do this work over there onto the left side. Okay, I'm going to work it to, on the right side because I have a little more space. But this right here says three halves divided by one half. Class, am I allowed to divide fractions? No. What method have I taught you you have to do? Take your red pen, and I want you guys to write KFC up there on top. As a reminder, you're not allowed to divide fractions, so we have to use the KFC method. Everybody, keep the first, flip the, and change the. Very good. Zachary, can I cross-reduce anything over there? Yes. What can I cross-reduce? The twos become one, and when you multiply that out, Zachary, what do you get? Three, okay? So this big answer for that whole problem right there is three. Class, should I be adding or subtracting that three? I should add it because if you look up here, we are adding it up there, which means we're going to continue to add it down here. And that is the final answer. All right, problem B, same idea once again. It says to factor out the coefficient. Armani, what is the coefficient on 3 fourths P minus 3 halves? 3 fourths, very good. So we are going to take that 3 fourths out. Let's rewrite the original problem. 3 fourths P minus 3 halves. Max, what do I need to divide every term by inside of my parentheses? Three-fourths is correct, because that's the number that I factored out. So I have to divide that inside of my parentheses. Jackson, what number should I drop down? Um, you should drop down uh, three, 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 yeah. The three-fourths, that's right. The number on the outside gets dropped down. Joshua, what is three-fourths P divided by three-fourths? One, what family? 1p. Okay, on the quiz or the test we just had, a lot of people forgot to bring that variable with them. So don't forget, keep it in the same family, all right? Now, the next part is a little tricky. We have 3 halves divided by 3 fourths. I'm not allowed to divide fractions, so Jeremiah, what should I do? KFC. Keep the first one, flip the second, and change the operation. Nolan, is there anything that can cross reduce? Yes. What should I do? Okay, very good. And Nolan, when you do that, what is your answer? One half. Not one half. Multiply the numerator first. Oh, uh, sorry, two, one. Two over one, and if you were to reduce that, what would that be? Uh, two. Two, very good. Okay, so this two is for that part right there. Now, class, was that a positive two or a negative two? Negative. Look right here. If there's a negative, I am going to drop down a negative sign also. All right, same instructions. Factor out the coefficient of the variable term. Now, there's something wrong with my original problem. Raise your hand if you think you know what is wrong with the original problem. Ariane, what's wrong with it? You're right. The variable term is second. We don't want that variable term to be second. We want it to be first, okay? So is that a positive 2.5M or a negative? It's a positive, so we're going to bring down 2.5M. 
And is this a positive 5 or a negative 5? Positive. Also a positive, so I'm going to bring down plus 5. Now we are ready to factor out the coefficient. Giselle, what is the coefficient? 2.5 is correct. So we're going to factor that out. Let's rewrite the original problem, 2.5m plus 5. Kamari, what should I divide every term by? Very good. We're dividing it by the exact number that we took out. Okay? Miles, what number am I going to drop down? Very good. We're going to drop down that 2.5. Now we need to simplify what's happening here in the middle. Mason, what's 2.5m divided by 2.5? No. A number divided by itself, Myra, what's it equal? 1m. Okay, you may leave the 1 there or you can get rid of that 1. Now, at this point in our lives, you're allowed to use a calculator if you want to. I want you to find the second part. Or you can do it there on the side. Okay, so remember, you are taking this top number, 5, and dividing it by the bottom number, 2.5. Okay, when you do that, you should have got positive 2. Now, let me explain to you how to read this. Because a lot of times people today have said this. 2.5 parentheses m plus 2. Guys, what does it mean when parentheses are there? Multiply. So this is how you should say this. 2.5 times m plus 2. Everyone say that. 2.5 times m plus 2. Very good. Okay, so the next section says to factor out the indicated number. What number does it tell us to factor out here, class? Everybody circle negative 4. So this is kind of simple because it's telling us exactly what to pull out of the original problem. So we're taking out a negative 4 from the original problem says negative 4p plus 8. If I factor that out, remember, I have to divide every single term by what I have taken out and put on the outside of the parentheses. I want you guys to find the answer. All right, is there anyone who would like to tell me what you got? Miles, what'd you get? Don't tell me with parentheses. Remember, it means times. Raise your hand if you got the same thing as Miles. Okay, here's what I saw some people had. They put plus a minus two. Now listen, you do not want to have double signs. We're going to eliminate one of the signs, okay? So out of that, who should win? Negative. The negative should win. So we do want the answer just as Miles said. Great job. Christopher, what are you factoring out? Negative five. Negative five, okay? So I'm going to take that out and rewrite the original problem. What do you divide each term by, Christopher? Uh, five. Not a five. Negative five. Negative five. All right, so tell us what you got. Uh, I got five times... Not five. Oh, negative five times negative D. Huh? I got a negative six. Okay, there's just one thing that I wish for you to do different. Let's focus on this part, Christopher. What is negative five divided by negative five? A uh, one. Oh. Two negatives makes a positive, okay? So oh. instead of that being a negative right there, this should be a positive D minus 6. How many of you would say you got this answer right here? Oh, wait. All right. Very good. Okay. Here we are on the think, pair, share section. Let's look and focus on problem A. This is just like the problems we did at the very beginning. Factor the expression using the GCF. Arion, out of problem A, what's the smaller number, 16 or 24? 16. Arion, help me to understand what are my factors of 16. And 4 times what? 4 times 4. Very good. Out of all those numbers, what's the biggest number or the greatest number that can fit into all of them, Arion? What is it? 8. 8. 
Okay, so let's circle that eight. Everybody repeat after me. Factors fit into numbers. Factors fit into numbers. So you are looking for a factor that will fit into both the 16 and the 24. And you're right. A 16 was not able to fit into this 24. Okay? So we're going to pull that 8 out. And then remember, we have to divide each term by whatever it was that we factored out. Garrick, what's the answer? Okay, so we want to drop down the 8. Nolan, focus on this right here. What is 16n divided by 8? Uh, eight. 16 divided by 8. Okay, very good, too. And that's the n family. And now, Nolan, let's focus on this. What is negative 24 divided by 8? Okay, negative 3. All right, now if I wanted to double check it, I can see once again, 8 times 2n does equal 16n, and 8 times negative 3 does equal negative 24. So we can see that that did work out. I want you guys to do problem B on your own. It's going to be done exactly like problem A. Who can help me with problem B? Myra, what's the smaller of the two numbers? Um, seven. What are the factors of seven? One times seven? Very good. What's the biggest of those two numbers that can fit into both numbers? Seven. seven. So we are going to factor out a seven from the original problem. When you do that, Myra, what do you get? Um, you want You are correct. I got it right. Number two, factor out the coefficient of the variable term. Kendall, what is wrong with the order I have here? Um, Who can help him? Christopher, what's wrong with it? Um, the variable term is in the very back. You're right. You never want the variable term to be in the back. So that's a positive 3.5H. And this is a positive 42, so plus 42. Now, class, what is the coefficient? There you go. I want you guys to try to do this one on your own. Joshua, what is the coefficient? 3.5. So, class, we should have been taking a 3.5 out to factor it out. We're rewriting the original problem. What do I need to divide each term by? 3.5. 3.5. So everything is getting divided by 3.5. Kendall, what's the answer? It would be 1. It would be 1H. No. What, what have I factored out? You factored out the 3.5. 3.5H. 1H, or as she said, you could just write an H. Very good. Raise your hand if you were able to get that same exact answer. Definitely me. <laughs> Final problem of the day. Garrick, what am I factoring out? Eight, the negative eight. Negative eight. Okay. So this is easy because it tells me exactly what to factor out. Negative eight comes out of the original problem. Then I rewrite the original problem. I have to divide each term by negative 8. The first thing you need to do is bring down that the negative 8. Very good. Mm -hmm. Multiplied by, what is this? Okay, what do you get when you do that? 40. And what would this part be? 56 divided by negative 8. Which would be? Negative seven. Oh, shit. Very good. All right. And that is it. There is no homework tonight.